Okay, folks, seeing that it's 6.30 on May 10th, I prepared to open up the May 10th, 2022 edition of the Hadley Conservation Commission meeting. And first on the agenda tonight is a notice of intent, DEP file number 170-0285, continued from last month, 205 Bay Road, proposed single family home septic system and driveway in the 100 foot buffer zone of BBW bordering vegetated wetland. Site visit conducted on 330 by Shyla and Edwin, who met with Adrian Dunk of GZA at the April 12th hearing. A file number had not been issued and more information was requested relating to grading on site. DEP did not have comments. So we have a file number now. We didn't have it last month, correct? That is correct. Okay. And the comment page came back with anything? They did not have any comments on this. Nothing. So who is here tonight to continue presenting? Uh, Dan Nitsche from GZA. Uh, Adrian is at in the Lemister Conservation Commission meeting. Okay, thank you. So I have, uh, as, uh, to take off from the last meeting, if I understand, here's just a, an example of the grading plan. A couple of folks to look at. Um, as folks, uh, folks talked about last time, we've got a bordering vegetated wetland uh, off to the uh, west of the house location. Um, projected from the buffer from that uh, resource area is a hundred foot buffer zone. That's shown as a dotted line that runs right through the middle of the house, roughly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get your buffer zone running right through here. Um, so that means uh, what we have is most of the house, some of the driveway, and the development to the west, the uh, um, around the yard area. That would all be within the buffer zone to the resource area. The septic system. That's just an ex, uh, estimated location. It's outside the buffer zone. Technically, that's not a jurisdictional activity at this point. We didn't know at the time when we wrote the NOI whether it was going to be in or out of the buffer zone, but so that's why we put it down on that. But today, uh, for the purpose of this meeting, we're talking about the house, the driveway, and the grading around the house um, that was within the uh, within, in your jurisdiction, within the buffer zone. We are identifying that the limit of work stops at the 35-foot no disturb per your bylaw. Mm -hmm. So there will be no work uh, proposed for this development. I just will bring to your attention, there's a note, note See number that. one, mm -hmm. uh, is, to be, is to requesting that we allow the, the owner to maintain the area as herbaceous, meaning as woody stuff grows, they cut it down. So a small tree comes up, small shrub, they cut it down, they just let the grasses keep growing. That's just a way to maintain it as it is. That keeps a view there. It keeps the, the, the ecosystem as it is, which is a field, and doesn't allow a forest in, uh, to grow in there. So that, that's, that's the reason that note is there. Um, so this plan, again, it was graded by an engineer in our office. They've stamped the plan. Uh, very little grading is, is needed for this particular property. It's, I wouldn't call it flat, but it's fairly level. It doesn't have a lot of pitch to it. So there it's is a knoll. Of, what's that? It's a knoll. Ooh, correct. A little bit of a knoll. Exactly. Yeah. Not so so it lends itself to sort of a walkout in the back. Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. So yeah. we elevated the house up so in the back corner of the house would basically be the, this would be at grade. You could walk right out right, right. the land so there now. So is there any in changes of the grade? That no. Gonna... No. All the grade changes would be the heavy black lines you see. Okay. So everything is well, way away from the 30 feet. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So we've never had this proposed before about the 35 foot zone being allowed to go in once a year and mow it. But is that, the, is that currently what's being done now? I, I haven't seen the site. Edwin, you there, the cows are mowing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but from your experience, has that been kept? Yeah, it, it would, the grass was not high, so yeah. the, the cows are mowing it. The cows are chewing on the grass and they're mowing it down. Okay. That's what they're doing. The, yeah. the thing, the the building lot is a knoll. I might it's right smack dab in the middle of the barn to the either side. Yeah. Okay. Got you right. <laughs> either side. So, is, so what's going to be done to keep the cows away in the future? I have no idea. No idea. I have no idea. I think that at the last meeting, Adrian mentioned that the property owner was going to approach the neighbor and, and talk socially about, you know, what they wanted How to come to an agreement. How to differently. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as the Conservation Commission is concerned, 
with the I I didn't know that they were gonna uh, mow. So if you take that away, the plot meets all the criteria for uh, the conservation commission. Everything everything I'm fine with except for that note. I don't know how to handle that. We never really allow people no. to go into the 35 foot zone and. Mowing. Yeah, some towns uh, like Ludlow allows us to go into their 25 foot no touch to remove invasive plants. So the woody growth that's coming up that's invasive, they'll let us go and just cut it by hand. I mean, we, I think we'd be fine with if you didn't want us to mow it, it's just to cut by hand to remove the any woody growth that would go in there. We're trying to keep grasses in there and not allow the, you know basically succeed into a shrub and tree environment. That's what we're trying to stop. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a reason for having a 35 foot buffer zone okay. to a wetland. Yeah. Is so we have some vegetation that may. Mm -hmm. Right. But otherwise, they'll, they'll just do the lawnmower. What was proposed to mark the 35 foot buffer zone anyway? Uh, note number two gives some ideas. If you had specific things you wanted, I heard last time at the meeting you you guys had a couple of ideas, but nothing concrete that you wanted out there. I, right. I, given, uh, given the situation, this is what I'm going to propose. Yeah. I'm, going to, I'm going to just throw out something. Sure. Okay, and everyone else can yep. say what they want. Chit chat. I would propose putting up a fence, and this would be probably to her benefit. Like a split rail fence? The fence would keep the cows from encroaching onto her property. Okay. If she was to keep it as like it is now, put a fence up as a 35 foot buffer yep. zone marker yep. and let the cows continue to use it and they'll, keep, they'll maintain it for her. Yeah. And they, they're, measure, they're, already, they're already keeping it down with the grass. Yeah. No shrubs. It's a natural way of letting the cows take care of it. Right. I, I like the idea. The only issue is these people will not be the ones who live there. So the next people may go, hey, wait a second. Well, I don't want cows okay. walking well, over my land. That's something they'll have to... <laughs> they're right. going to have to, gonna have to accept yeah. that if they purchase the process. Right. It's part okay. of the, the part of the process. Yeah, I think a fence along the 35 makes good sense to make it very clear where that is and you can't go past that. Right. And yeah, then, I think that makes sense. And then if they want to object to the cows... Getting that close, I, I think the cows would be a great way naturally to, just to keep ma it, manage it as, to manage it's, been, it as it, yeah. like it's been being done for years. Yeah, yeah. And sustainable. So, and what about um, the? I like the idea of a fence. Do we want to have them measure it from the from the uh, solid foundation of the house? Well, so no, we, we know we, that we, we, actually, we actually have it on a plan. A scale plan, plan right? It's there. a scale plan, that one. Okay. As long as they put the fence in. As shown as proposed, yeah. you can always go back out there with this plan and measure off because we have a surveyed yeah. plan. Now, do you have to check with the landowner first before we can ask for this condition? No, no. no it's your condition, and it, you know it's your right. right. It's your right. I don't. I don't think it's too onerous personally. They just wanted to be able to not get shrubs and trees to grow in here. If you're going to allow that with the cows going through to eat it, then that's fine. And we'll just put a fence around the 35 foot. I think it'd be an awesome solution. Yeah. I I agree with you. Okay. I don't know if a split if a split rail fence is only. I would I would I would recommend a fence of such that would keep whether it be a triple rail or something or multiple rail fence. Yeah. So the cows will not proceed through. Okay. It should be cow proof. Whatever architecturally <coughs> pleasing is up to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I'm, I'm just trying to think of language. I mean, just. Maybe is there something to prevent the cows from getting into the yard? Is that, I mean, just some sort of fence to prevent the, the cows? The fence is for what? two purposes, to mark the 35-foot buffer right. zone, and to also keep the cows in their place. Yeah. So they usually are not very aggressive. No, no. But if they've been walking there, they'll just keep on walking what they've always walked, too, probably. That'll keep them off. Otherwise, that's going to be the solution to keep them from coming closer to the house. Yeah. All the way around. Okay. And being living out where we're in the country, I think it's really kind of neat to have those cows right in your right, right in your yard. Yeah, <laughs> the agricultural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what this town is about. That's right. Yeah. I would. No, I think that's fine. I wouldn't. I wouldn't build a house here myself. <laughs> okay. You know, because it, it, it it's smack dab in the middle. There's cows. There's cows over here. Cows over there. And it, it's all the more here. reason to put a fence because, like you said, there's cows mm -hmm. all around them. The site. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Surrounded by cows. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to make a motion to. I'm looking for a motion to close the hearing, uh, subject to conditions that we'll discuss. 
I'll so move. No second. Go ahead and second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 No, Un unanimous. Aye. Aye. No. No? No. What? No. You're not vote for that? No, I know. No, what do you mean? You don't want to close the hearing? No, I want to close the hearing, yeah. Okay. Uh, That's what we're voting on. Yeah. All right, close the hearing. We're closing the hearing. So we're open to discussions about uh, um, I basically would accept the plans as proposed with the as grading as shown, with the limits shown. Um, with the offense delineating the 35 foot buffer zone that would be cow resistant, strike out that number one notes on the plans, remove that about manual. Okay. If something changes in the future, they could come back and talk sure, to you. Sure, they can come back and talk to you. Yep. Uh, I just don't want to open up a, uh, yeah, no a, a pr set of precedents because we haven't really allowed that. Okay. At all. I appreciate that. I know it's your bylaw. And, and, and that way, keep that you, consistent. You, you like the idea of having a permanent marker. Of the 35 foot. Okay. Do not disturb touch zone. Um, any other conditions the board would like to see in place? No. I mean, you got, got to, obviously, you have a siltation fence. Sure. Show. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. 35 foot zone. Um, so I would look for a motion to accept that, those terms. So move. Second. Second. Go ahead and second it. Thank you for a discussion. Okay, we'll have a roll call. Um, Edwin? Aye. No. Gordon? No? Yeah. I'll vote yes. And Aye. Ray? Yes. So we have three A's and one nay. It passes. Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Shelly, do you need, do you want all three of those or do you want just one? You can have all three if you want. One is fine. Oh, okay. Thank you. We have uh, all the fees that we pay, correct? Correct. Okay. And then we'll have all the other normal standard or conditions languages. Yeah. We'll keep we that one keep for, for the file. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Fine. And then I'll send it over. I'll send it over with me? Yeah. Great. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate Thank it. You. Have a good night. You as well. Move on to the next. We have a request for determination of applicability, 113 Aquavita Road. Larry Petrus, I believe. I would pronounce it. Seeks a permit for the parking of a single camper trailer in Porta Potty in the riverfront area off of Aquavita Road. The parcel is accessed by an offshoot formerly known as Ferry Street, but is now known as Sandy Beach Road. You both signed in on the attendance sheet? Yes. Correct. Okay, all the fees have been paid? Advertising service. Come on forward and tell us more about your project. <laughs> well, it's, it's not our land. It's uh, owned by Greg and Leslie Mish of Middle Street. And um, as I mentioned to Shelley, I would appreciate if there's any communication going forth that you would go through me. We have permission to be there and the family's experienced some health issues, as you know. And I would want to have them bothered by a board in town, so, so I appreciate we, that. So we, we have uh, applicants, so we have permission to land usage, okay, so I understand. Okay, all right. So, you, tell us more about it. Well, I have one Did spelling have error. Plan? I left a letter with uh, uh, Shelley and uh, details I believe it's going to be our 27th year of camping at the site uh, as a husband and wife with a single mobile unregistered camper trailer which is towed in and out by a professional towing company. July 4th of 2013 we pulled out the trailer due to excessive flooding. This was the only time we experienced high water during the camping time period. The hydrological Northampton flood stage must be at 115 or higher to reach the tires of the camper trailer. 
and we are using our third camper trailer in our history at this site where we dry camp and provide marine batteries for electricity. A single porta potty is rented for seasonal usage. It's a United Site Services out of Indian Orchard. And the hydrological forecast flooding height at Northampton would need to reach 116 feet to start flooding the base of the porta potty. A couple of years ago, we at our own expense removed and dis properly disposed of illegally dumped tires, some with wheels. There was like 15 of them. Uh, we are good environmental students, uh, stewards of the land, beach, and trees, ensuring it is kept clean and neat. Uh, we have two <coughs> propane tanks for cooking and lighting at the site. The camper itself, will you park it? We don't have a detailed plot plan, but how far back is it from the river? It depends what height the river's at, but in the normal height, about I would guess probably be about 170 feet maybe. Okay. I would guess, but I, I don't, I didn't ever We're trying to it. keep things back if we can, 200 feet from the mean annual high water mark. Okay. Well, the problem we have is that there's widow makers and different trees that <laughs> could fall on you and kill you, so we're kind of in a spot we know it's safe and it's flat and it's away from the fire pit. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, in the, in the 26 years, we've only had to pull it out once because the, the water, I mean, obviously we don't put it in there if there's snow melt and the the spring flooding starts. But you're a good 150 feet plus oh, back. Plus. Yeah. yeah. So you close. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a case where you are um, somewhat grandfathered in and using the site, but you've never had a permit for it. I'm aware of where the site is. I know the seasonality of individual campers in that area. Usually you don't even see them from the river, correct? Not at our place, no. And Last actually, it's funny, but when, trees, but so when the yeah the beavers the took some down recently, but the, so it's pretty much sheltered from the yeah. And, and, the, and the funny thing is, when we get the strong, straight wind storms and storms, <coughs> our friends that have their areas cleared, they don't have the strength of the forest to keep the wind knocked down, and they're losing big trees, and we ha have to be lucky because we only miss some branches. Yeah, but you got the, poplar trees, which are yeah, the strength out. of the forest being kept together is. And you have, is you, you, you haven't cleared it all out to the riverfront. No, you? no, no, no. Uh, our objective since uh, we've been there is to kind of keep it as natural as possible. And uh, the other thing, you, you know, uh, we we have people that come. The same people visit with boats and they're great stewards of the beach. They do not let people leave bottles and, and litter. And you know, I, I, that's my pet peeve in life. I'm 35 years in the Coast Guard Auxiliary, and uh, I do an inky to whale and thing. you have no plans us. for a dock? There is a bridge, but it's, it's a dock bridge because when the water comes up, there's like mud and backwater. Mm -hmm. So we've had that there since day one, and, and actually, my friend's going to probably mm. try to uh, put a aluminum, aluminum ramp to, 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 because in case the landowner is, has a good day, we can wheel them out to the beach. Okay, but is uh, it something that can be removed? It's yeah. it's well, removed it is every year and tied to a tree. Okay, good. I, okay, that's all. But right. it's, it's, it's not a permanent. It's, structure. it's there, no, and, and when it's when it's flooded, it has a cable it's, tied to a tree. That's fine. And on each side, so it doesn't go anywhere. So you you just know, just that particular is really difficult to 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 anchor and secure a. A dock for boat purposes. No, this is oh, all. This isn't a dock for boat. This is for I walking know. through the yeah. mud. That's all. Yes, yeah, so you don't. Yeah, stick I, I know. In the I, mud. Know yeah. I, I know what's happening down there. Yeah, I can understand yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. But it is actually a piece of an old dock. So when you say, do you have a dock, we don't want to say... It's not oh. used as a dock, it's used as a bridge so you don't you're, step in the mud. You're, you're fine with just having one camper there like you have now. Yeah. Okay. You'd have to apply for the permit with the building department after this. Yeah, I might have a question about that if you would know. Would I need to get a permit for the porta potty and permits for the propane tanks from the fire department? And they're going to want to. They're going to. They're, they're going to have. There's going to be a procedure for that to keep record of it. We've been doing that. That's why we want a permit. The campers, the fire department wants to know who is where for for rescue reasons. If we have an emergency situation, high water, what out there for propane tanks that could possibly break loose and float free? They have to be secured. These are all things that the board, you know, same thing with the potty. That's why we're going through a uh, camping trailer permit process. It's so all the other departments have to say about some safety issues. So the police know, the fire department knows, especially about propane tanks. Board of Health, as far as sanitary situations, we know if you have a porta potty, 
you're not digging a hole in the ground and leaving it there unsanitary. Yeah. It's being taken care of. This is a reason why we want to do this process. It's we, not to say you can't have a <laughs> we actually to enjoy the waterfront, but we, we're trying to put some restrictions in place as far as quantity, location, yeah. proximity to the water, safety we, issues. We actually have a, a carpet that goes to the porta potty and the United Site Services says it's the cleanest one they, they deal with. <laughs> <laughs> and we've always had it permanent. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. of yeah, yeah. dealing with the board of health. Yeah, we uh, 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 leave, entering and leaving the site on a seasonal basis, which is required by the, the permit. Mm -hmm. Do any other board members have questions? Mm -hmm. okay. I have so we have, we have a question. Go ahead. Board I'm not a board member. I just uh, have a question. There's a limit to how long you can keep the trailer? Because usually we've often kept it there till November. Just so it's there while we're cleaning up at the end of camping season. I think is with that? the new permit process, I think it might be the end of October. That's what I thought I read. It might be Halloween, October thirty first. I yeah. thought I read something like that, and I'm like, I wonder why? Because it's always been a, a good thing just to have when we're cleaning and up at the end of the years, season. It's going to be you got to pull it out September twentieth, and it's just the luck of the draw. We a date was picked. And that was it. And I was just curious why that day. And I think that it gives someone a chance to remove it, to make phone calls, to arrange, uh, uh, to have the trailer removed and things like that. It's not, we're really pissed at you. <laughs> well, I was just curious no, because what? for me, it's I keep my water, my first aid kit and everything there. Oh, so sure when there's a lot of cleanup as the leaves fall. Oh, yeah. And that's where I was just wondering. Then we get kids visiting, so I want to keep the lawn mowed so there's no tick issues. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so, things like that. So yeah. I, We don't usually camp there. It's after Columbus Day is usually our last weekend of camping, but the trailer has stayed. Right. Usually till mid-November when we're still cleaning up the site. It's, well, it's in a Hadley tobacco bar now. Well, we'll, we'll <laughs> just have to see who comes out and forces that for you. We'll see what happens, okay? Yeah. I just, well, I didn't want to be we'll, making we'll, an We'll comply. Before. There's no question. She just had a question of why. Why? It, it, it just, it's just a good yeah. I don't base. know, honestly, if uh, the building inspector will be going around on a weekly basis checking all this on a right to the date. So you may have a little leeway, but you may be encouraged to take it out. Let's <laughs> see what happens. You know what I'm saying? Well, if a hurricane comes and they get eight, ten inches of rain in, in Vermont, we're taking it out. <laughs> yeah, and they often do. We, but well, you don't want, want a torpedo. Don't want a torpedo camper going down the river. <laughs> that's gonna. That's, that'll be stated on the permit, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. In the event of a yeah. natural well, disaster, well, we have yeah, to we have to put in these dates. How you, how and wish you comply is is your call. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we don't we'll, want to get in trouble. We'll comply. Not, <laughs> not complying, but it's just been a bit. We have to. We have to set these rules because everyone else has to abide by them. As far as if you cheat or something, you know, that's, we don't know about that right now. Okay. Um, I'm not going to be down there looking personally. Because um, you're not very visible either. Normally not, unless you're down there. You Even from know. Aquavita Road, Unlike you don't the other see campers us. you see from Aquavita Road. You don't see us from Aquavita, you and you, you don't are. usually see us from the river. You're buried in the woods. Okay. Uh, let's see the form that we had before. Oh, the, the example one? Yeah, the example. That's good. So, I'm going to look for a motion to uh, close this hearing. We'll go ahead and determine the. Did they, uh, did the, the people on this uh, request pay all the permits and everything and they got a. Yep. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. I'm just, just checking that out. Okay. Some people are scoff laws. <laughs> Some people are what? Scoff laws. Scoff laws. They don't pay enough. Scoff laws. <laughs> so let's go. So we don't know. Oh, Larry wrote the check we're gonna, right We're, we're going to keep going. <laughs> okay, here. good. Yeah. Okay, uh, I have, look for a motion to close the hearing. I'll make it. Second? I'll, I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 A
Open for discussion. Any debates just for the discussion? I'm going to suggest a negative determination. The work described in the request is within an area subject to protection under the Act, but will not remove, fill, dredge, or alter in that area. Therefore, said work does not require the filing of a notice of intent. And basically, we have a, uh, a list of conditions that we apply to other sites right along Aquavita Road. Um, Such as? Okay, findings, the mean annual high water line was determined in the field with blah, blah, blah. So we're asking for at least 100 feet back from the mean annual high water mark. It sounds like they're going to be well within that 150 right, yep. to 170 feet. Uh, all RV sheds and any permanent structures should be outside at inner 100 for, for, for area. Right. Applicants shall obtain a house lot number and post it at the entrance to the lot from the access road in order to facilitate emergency services. So we're, you're entering in off of that right of way road. You, you What's have, the number? Is it 113? I'm not sure what number you would give. Yes, probably 113. That's, that's what's so, on the agenda. So the fire department, police department knows. We've actually been the rescue site because people on the water okay. have used us okay. for an ambulance, for police, and for fire, have all been there over the and ha and decades. Have, and having that house lot number at the entrance to your site will facilitate them. Right. Okay. Yeah. A recreational vehicle should not be placed on a lot before May 1st. It must be removed from the lot no later than October 31st in any given year. This is what we're putting in here, like I said. If you were to slide a few days and they don't catch you or say something, okay. But we have to put that in there. Yeah. You, you have that. to put it ending date and starting date. You okay. have to do that. The RVs must be legally licensed according to the laws of the state in which it is registered. The RVs must be maintained in a lot in a ready to move condition in the event of flooding. The RVs may only be located on the lot and location approved on the plan. The applicant shall comply with any law, any lawful conditions, restrictions, or regulations assigned to them or the lot question by any relevant board or other authority of the town, state, or federal government. The applicant must complete permitting process under the town's river bylaw by submitting a completed checklist to the building inspector slash floodplain compliance administrator. This approval determination does not include a dock. If the applicant wishes to move the locations of the RV, he must request and receive prior approval from the Conservation Commission first. So if you have a situation you want to relocate a tree issue, something down the road, we have to know. This determination requires any RV, shed, deck, or similar structures within the 100 foot mean annual high water mark to move back out of that area, which you don't have in that case. This is kind of a boilerplate list of order conditions that, I would say order conditions, or conditions, special conditions, We've applied to the request for determination form. Um, I'll send this all to you so that you have it in writing. <laughs> okay. I think we have. I think I've read most of that. So. So do I have a motion for this? Negative with these conditions. Which um, which I'll number? Negative. Negative two. Negative two. Hang on, let me double check that one. Make this way. Yeah. Negative two. So I have a motion. The board makes a motion. The second is second. Edwin. Okay. All those in favor. Ray. Aye. Aye. Okay. Everyone's unanimous. Aye. I don't have to call everybody. Okay. The two. Is there anything I need to present to the building inspector for you his to, permit? You're going to need this. They're going to want to copy this. Okay. So I'll send it to you tomorrow. Okay. When I'm great. In the office, so. great. Um, I think I have your email. So, is yes. that good for you? That's beautiful. Okay. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I talk to the building department every day usually so I can tell them as well that you'll be coming their way. Oh, thank you. Of course. It's the first time I've been in here, a beautiful building. <laughs> Still has that new car smell, huh? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Another request for determination of applicability. Thank you for your time. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. Leah Schmidt seeks a permit for the parking of two RVs in the riverfront area. Location is 44A Honeypot Road. Yes. Hi. Have you folks signed in the attendance sheet? I have not. Okay. No. Here it is. Sorry about that. Oh. Yes, uh, no, nobody signed or, or is it passing around? Coming back. Oh, okay. 
Cool. And they all the fees have been collected for this? No. Uh, no, nope. right they're bringing it right here. Right yep. Now. Thank you so much. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, awesome. Yeah, and so I haven't mailed mine either. I kind of wanted to make sure everything was correct before I mailed it to them. But I have it here, and I have one I can edit. So, like, when you so, say that, you mean DEP? Yeah. Oh, okay. So they, yeah. they haven't even received this yet? No. I just, oh, I just got the application uh, a week ago, but I, I didn't... Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that everything was correct before I sent it in. I'll mail it so tomorrow. How this, how, okay, the other one has been already sent to the DEP, correct? I believe so. Exactly. You don't know? I'll double check, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. So what is the ruling? How long do we have to, do we have to, do they ever notify us back that they received it or not? How does it work with requests? I don't, I don't know if they did or not. See, we notice of intent, we get, a, we get a, a form back with a file number. Any, any yeah, questions? I, I don't know if they send anything for receiving. They, they acknowledge their receipt of the determination. I know that for sure. I, okay. I don't know if I usually get a notification that they received a request. Okay. I think it's usually the determination is sent to them, and then they have their appeal period. That like 10 days or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So come on forward and present your project to us. So um, I know some of you have been out there already. On 44 Honeypot, there's... The land was split into two pieces. The front land is for agriculture, the other land that abuts the river. There's already a camper that's on the land right now. I'm just requesting to have two additional campers on the land. There's plenty of space for it. I know it has to be 200 feet back from the river. I know they have to be 25 feet apart, and I can accommodate all those things. We've been out here. Steve? Yeah, was that, Yo, Steve? that was the one Steve, you were at last yeah, fall. You, yeah. We've been out to the site. What's existing is well, well more than 200 feet back. They, they wanted to clean up the site and get rid of some of the old. And I already did, actually. Oh, I, go. That I filled the 30 yard dumpster no. already. It's already gone. The, the car's gone. Uh, the deck that was over, hanging over the river, that was kind of eroding into there. I ripped that whole thing out already, too. It's a very, it's a very large parcel. Yeah. So they have plenty of room for an additional and you And you, you were able to gain access? legal access to that property well, well, I, well i own the property but so i have a right of way okay. through yeah, yeah i okay. have the right of way it does, it's unique it doesn't have direct frontage on the road but no. it has a right of way to it and, okay no you know, i've talked to you know, i've talked to many people as well i talked to the building <laughs> department about they, they yeah. can handle that part yep. that part um so this is very similar to the last one we just did mm -hmm. In that, uh, this is the. It's kind of a rough picture of, of it, yeah. Covered, there's an existing covered deck that they're. It's there. Covered. We're going to keep it for now. Um, mm -hmm. Just, but it's it's really beat up. So, so I mean, I just don't have the money right now to kind of fix it, but it's nice to have a covered but, deck there. But this RV3, how far is that back from top of River Bay? Oh, it's it's that definitely 200 feet, over 200, 200 feet, yeah. Over, yeah. Okay, so the covered deck's even 200. Yeah, honestly, we're thinking about actually bringing, going in, because there's an area of just kind of brush right now. But so we're kind of clearing it out you, and kind of pushing you, all of the if, RVs. If that cover deck is more than 200 feet back from the top of the bay. The cover, the cover deck probably is not. The existing cover deck mm -hmm. there is probably not 200 but feet. If you, if but it's, want, probably, if, it's, definitely, it's definitely over 100. But if you wanted to, to re recreate or something. I would definitely bring that you, you, back, 100%. You back. Yep. would work with you on that. Absolutely. Okay. Because right now you're showing the covered deck, you're showing RV3. Yeah, you know, so I, yeah, so yeah, exactly. So it's not the perfect scale. You're right. I should have brought it back, brought it back a little bit. Um, it might be. It's 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 pretty far back from. So the top of the bank to the river is the like. Top of the bank. The top to of the bank is about fifty. Yeah, point. I was kind of looking at it. I kind of have a picture here. here. This is like an old map of it, kind of. But so it kind of showed you that there's about fifty feet from the river to the top of the bank, and then the, there that deck is the open deck is ripped out, and the covered deck is here. So it's probably a little over a hundred feet. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen with that open deck? The open deck's gone. I already ripped the whole thing out. And that wasn't really. Good. Yep, we already, it was we already took it. And it was bad. Yeah, it was. Well, honestly, well, it, actually, the frame was in pretty good shape, but there was no land underneath it. Yeah. Holding it up, you know what I mean? It was. It's pretty sketchy. We were kind of <laughs> ripping them out, and at one point, I was just like, "Just let's take this whole piece, guy." So according to the scale, that covered deck is about seventy-five feet back. Yeah. From the top of the bank, it really is kind of a. I would encourage you to move that back at least 100 feet absolutely i mean i i, I, I the only thing is i just don't want to rip it down right now but it is beat up and it's definitely due i was hoping i could wait till next year for that feet back is where we would like to have it yeah 
Because you so got the land here. We, we, we can't year? allow something in the 100 to 200 foot zone. Right. Because uh, you have the ability to be beyond that 200 foot zone. Right. The river law. Yeah, no, do, is it something that I need to get ripped out and taken care of this year? Or can I wait? It's just, it's, 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 it's already been there for I don't know how many years now. How long has it been there? It's, it had to have been there for years now at this point. I mean, the trailer, that, that trailer had been, had been there for 10, yeah, 20. Yeah, 20 years. The deck maybe maybe a little over 10. I mean, I'm about you know 15 feet up from the river. The, the bank is about 15 feet up from the river itself, about 10 to 15 feet up. Mm-hmm. And that trailer never left. The, the guy who owned the land, he took, kept the trailer and it just stayed there. All year, covered deck, the other deck. Like, I don't know if they ever got water up there. I'm not sure, but... Well, I can imagine at some point it, you know, it could have. He did, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure he did, but I'm, and that might be why the, that's exactly why the deck was eroding into the river in the first place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how's the board feel about the covered deck? Move back or get. Uh, I would say do it as soon as you can. Don't, don't the, wait until next year. Don't wait till the year after. Do it ASAP. And if you can't do it, what? Why don't you? Two months. What, let's do that covered deck as part of this. Request for determination. Yeah. You want me to make it part of this request? Yeah. To put yeah. a new one in? You'd be covered for the next three years to get it done. You could use it the way it is right now. Yeah. But you would have a permit in place as long as you show us that's 200, Absolutely. Feet, 200 feet back from the top of bank. I would totally do that. I would let you recreate that deck. Okay. That'd be perfect. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah. Money. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so should I add that in this one that I send to them as well? We'll, we'll put it. We'll put it in the uh, special conditions. Okay. okay. Any other further questions, anybody? No. no. I look for a motion to close the hearing. I no. still move. Second. The board. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. So open for discussion. Um, without rereading everything, it's, it's a negative two determination. Right. You heard the previous. <laughs> Speakers, what is expected right. of you? Right. That is it, just like Gary said. We're doing this because it got dumped in our lap. Lap. Yeah. And it's because the fire department, yeah. police department, mm-hmm. and, and I need to make some rules. Want mm-hmm. Some rule. I get that. So that's oh, why we're doing it. So yeah. I'm going to reference the special conditions from the last one, and we're just going to probably tweak a little bit. Okay. Here. And so is that something I should write? Is there special conditions part in here? No, you're going to get this I'll, from us. I'll be sending it. Okay, to perfect. So then that's so the one I'll mail to them? Um, yeah. We're going to ask that all the RVs... I'll clear that up. <laughs> okay, you're going to make, we'll change it. That all the RVs will be located 200 feet back from top of bank, minimum, mm-hmm. which they, they're, they're agreeable to. That's going to allow them to have their three RVs at the requested separation. Right, and they're going to have 25 feet between each RV. Between each RV, yep. The existing Correct. covered deck as shown on the plans will be taken down within the next year to two, because it's usually good for three years to request. All right. We'll do it in the next year or two. Perfect. And relocated, reconstructed, at least 200 feet back from top of the bank where the RVs are going to be located. Mm-hmm. And it should be of you know, similar size. Uh, yeah, it will be. Mm-hmm. Within a reason. Yeah. Um, I think it's like 12 by 16 now, maybe. Yeah. Something similar to that, yeah. The, the building inspector will want to be aware of it. As well. Yeah, yeah. Situation where other stuff has already been built well within 100 feet. It has to be relocated and moved back. To okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to reread all that because I did it previously, the conditions. Yep, I listened. Get in the copy of the form. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then you can obviously have to comply with all the other requirements for yep. the propane tanks, uh, lettering the street address, so they know where the entrance is. Yep, there is one now. It's actually already there. Thank Anything you. else anybody else wants to add? No. Not as far as the access to the river itself, is there going to be any changes? Uh, right now, it's kind of just like... It, it's not deep enough to have a dock. Honestly, no, oh, no, no, no. Well, no there's no dock no, in this application. Yeah, there's no dock. Honestly, right now, we're kind of just taking it step by step. But there's to get down to the river is pretty. It's pretty tough right now. More, more for quiet recreation. Yeah, normal. And you can theory. go down there, but I mean, it's it's, it's pretty just some mucky. Wood that people put in. It's that, yeah, yeah it's, it's just like wood pieces that kind of just like make makeshift stairs that get down there. Yeah, if you put any type of permit structure in, we're yeah, you made aware of that. But I'm going to say probably any way you access the water is going to be some through some 
natural means down the bank. Right, that's kind of what it is. Kind of slide, sliding on your butt down there and, you know, making your way. Yeah, find that out. <laughs> you slide down on a boogie board and catch it. <laughs> right, there you go. Do I have a motion to suss as I presented? So move. Second? Second. All those in favor? All right. All right, unanimous. All right. Okay. Good. All right. Okay, so thank you so much. You, right? Yeah, thank you. Call you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your time. Okay. Next on the agenda is request for certificate of compliance. This is kind of interesting. Eighty-six, formerly was sixty-six Mount Warner Road. File number was one seventy dash nine zero. An order of conditions was issued November twenty-second, nineteen ninety-five. And no certificate of compliance has been issued. Page rails back, the current owner was not the one who applied for the notice of intent. Seeks a COC, Certificate of Compliance. Gary to provide updates from the site visit on this property May 7th, which I was unable to get to, but I uh, checked it out since. Gordon has since been out there. Come to find out when we looked at the file. Uh, I wasn't even at that hearing, but Gordon has a very good memory of that. <laughs> he was one of the three that signed the order yeah. conditions. And what you report to us, is there anything that you saw that no, doesn't... Nothing, nothing wrong with it. It, it was a house that was constructed, um, and they were they had a 35-foot buffer zone, etc. but everything seems to be looking fine. This no is more of a, a clerical paperwork thing, because okay. without having a certificate of compliance recorded with the Registry of Deeds, they cannot proceed with the land transfer, because the order of conditions is holding that up without a certificate of compliance also registered with registered deeds so so we're just cleaning up a, some errant paperwork basically so the OOC was issued in 95 yeah so it's you know been built a while yeah <laughs> so we have the work regulated by the above reference order condition has been satisfactorily completed that's the box we checked in number five yep. the original landowner property was Lewis Greenbaum and um, yep. I would look for a motion to issue the certificate of compliance as such. I'll make it. Gordon makes a motion, seconded by? I second it. Edwin, any further discussion? Like I said, this is 27 years ago. <laughs> a long time ago. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, it's unanimous. And do we need signatures anywhere in this? No? Yeah, there should be. Not a signature page. I have another. Well, we need this. We need this form for the other COC. My printer probably ran out of paper. Okay, so we have it on record. Oh, no, uh, oh, yeah. You're looking at the oh, request. request. Oh, okay. yeah, that's the request. This I'm is sorry. this is the certificate. There you go. <laughs> Smack me in the head. <laughs> <laughs> There's no ongoing conditions. Are we actually, uh, what were the conditions before? One second. I'm ahead of myself. Oh gosh, this is written on a typewriter. Um, <laughs> there were general conditions. Uh, there were special conditions. There were five of them. Okay. If you want to look through those, I'll read them. Sorry. Uh, the special conditions near the edge of structure, not less than 35 feet from wetlands, which they've done. Mm -hmm. That's that's already established. Hay bills to be staked in front of silt fence from areas of fencing near wetlands, flagging, so blah, blah, blah. No work during winter, at least temperature settings. Shrub line to be installed as soon as feasible from lot line mm -hmm. to opposite WF. We will serve to mark wetland edge to discourage entry, prevent erosion, siltation, no automobile. Zigzag areas, lot line. So basically, they just have to maintain a 35 foot buffer zone. Now, when you were out there, did you see where they had enclosed? No, it's more up tight around the buildings in the back, you know. It's not it's going not way up. No, I don't see there's a lot of There's a lot of stuff you could move down there further, but I, I think they must have enough ahead of them already. I, uh. I'm gonna leave you more along. <coughs> I'm, I'm of the opinion of not adding anything else to this. 
What's the rest of the board feel? I agree. As long as those original conditions will be in effect. We haven't <laughs> been checking that for 27 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Most of them were relevant to the construction of that. They really were. Yeah. Once the house was constructed and completed, a lot of the special conditions were satisfied as long as the continual on. Okay, so we got to do. Did we vote for this? I'm sorry. Uh, did we vote for this already? No. Okay, I'm looking for a motion to vote on this to the compliance issue with, uh, with no move. additional conditions. Uh, seconded by Gordon? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Unanimous. Like I said, this is more of a clerical nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 1995. Oh, that's 27 years ago. We needed some time to think about it. Uh, yeah. But not it happens. This happens. I have my own that I will have to Oh, yeah. And after you signed that one, the determination for the last one was not signed by everybody. Okay. Well, all right. Do you want to start us off for the determination? Thank you. This is This is all together. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. And then um, this is the next one. Okay, so next up we have, uh, is this also a COC? Yep. yep. Certificate of Compliance, Nutley Road Head Wall Replacement, file number 170-284. In order of conditions with issues, March 9, 2022, and Nick Cristofori with Comprehensive Environmental Seeks a Certificate of Compliance. Multiple site visits have been conducted and good communication has been maintained with Scott McCarthy of DPW. Mm -hmm. Erosion controls were adjusted on the south side during the site visit to perform more effectively and do remain, but controls were removed from the north side. Mm -hmm. So, I I, we don't know. Should we wait until we get a, a fair rainstorm to see if the, the drainage works or not? That's the only thing I would just think. I mean, they've. they've They've got the siltation controls in place. They've done seeding. Yeah, I've been I, out there. Yeah, I, I do. And uh, I, I, I kind of think they did a very good I job. Can't, I can't think of where there's going to be any no. issues. And they, if you look on the street, there's fire hydrants mm -hmm. all on that street. So they had to go somewhere, either through the middle yeah. of the bridge or something. So I don't think That's there's any on, ongoing conditions. <laughs> So they did, they did a good job. Took a I'm going to make. A, I'm looking for a motion that to give or give a, a COC without any additional. I'm going to get. Board makes a motion seconded by. Second. Great. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. It's unanimous. And I think it came out great because they did the best time of the year. No, I'm not going to say Couldn't ask for better weather than you. No, they couldn't ask for better weather. Happy with the result. Yep. Good. Yep. Good. 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 Next other business, DPW emergency certification. There was a water pipe that transects a culvert on Bay Road, which needs needed to be replaced. 
The actual culvert had rotted and has been fitted with a sleeve to restore flow. The road has been the road has begun developing sinkholes. The culvert services at intermittent stream drainage drainage ditch. Shiloh visited the site with Scott McCarthy on April 27th. You can see the damage as well as photos taken from the side of the culvert. The work has already been done as this pertains to life safety and was declared an emergency by the Attorney General. Mm -hmm. the commissioner is being asked to sign this emergency certification to document the event. So it doesn't matter what we say, we just got to sign it. That's all. Yeah. It was it's done. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. Yeah. This is clerical again in nature. Yeah. What spurred that on? Was there a problem with the? There was a problem with the water pipe that goes through the culvert, um, and the culvert itself was like rotted. Um, so the culvert now is fixed. And yeah, they they fitted it with a sleeve and oh, uh, oh, okay. secured it in place. So it's actually a slightly smaller pipe that's going oh, through okay. right now, but the flow will be much more efficient because it's actually a culvert again. Gotcha. <laughs> um, yeah, Scott showed me photos that one of the guys from his team uh, went in and brave soul. <laughs> Thing was really nasty. Okay. Native Plant Trust Surveying. The Native Plant Trust is stewarding surveys for the large world, 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 world pagonia, mm -hmm. a somewhat uncommon native plant which appears to have made presence in Hadley. Mm -hmm. Surveying will be taking place in May into early June off of Reservoir Road. These plants occur in both wetlands and upland areas, especially in areas of anthropogenic disturbance. This effort is primarily to document presence and the extent of the species and questions should be directed to Shyla who has been coordinating with MPT. This is more of just a PSA. I already let uh, DPW know where they're going to be surveying just so they know if there's people gallivanting around in the woods that they're looking for plants. <laughs> okay, but they're just going to be servicing. They're not going to be gaping. No, they're, they're just looking for, for presence and surveying. Um, yep. That's just more of a PSA. Okay. Hooray for plants. <laughs> bills. Do we have any bills? Nope. Mm -hmm. Okay. Updates. Ideal Movers, file number 170-283. Charlotte conducted a site visit on April, <laughs> on April 20th, where she met with the general contractor, Mike Stowes, and Steve of Carl's Excavating to inspect erosion and sediment control, silt fence and straw waddles. Next steps discussed include the laying of a construction mat at the entrance to the site, to contain sediment to the limit of work and stripping the loam topsoil to begin filling the site and compressing the soil, which will take a few months. A building permit has not been issued at this time. Gordon, you've got a front seat. How's it looking? <laughs> it's flat now. Yep. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sign for Dawson Reserve. Uh, yep, so that was postponed. Um, we don't have a new date. Uh, but if we could read the next item. Um. It is a tree planting in memory of Paul Alexanderson. Janice mm -hmm. had been in touch with Paul's wife a couple years ago and due to COVID and the weather it was postponed. Mm -hmm. The idea was to plant the tree inside the Alexander Dawson Wildlife Reserve. The purpose of this item is to start brainstorming the details of such an, in of such an installation, i.e. Who would like to participate? When might be a good time? Should we do this in tandem with the sign installation? I wasn't sure if you would think it might be a good opportunity to commemorate both Alexander and Paul together, I, or do two separate events. I, since since I was a chair a long time ago prior to Alexander Dawson, mm -hmm. and then also uh, Paul Alexanderson too, both being chair people, I'd like to do something in tandem for both of them. Yeah. Just not this this week because it's, they're supposed to close Rocky Hill. Yeah, it, it's a case where they both were past chairpersons. Right. So the board they spent a good amount of time. They were good people, and they right. we both lost them. We yeah. lost both of them, I should say. So I think it'd be nice to do it together. I don't okay. know when would be a good time. So What's a good time to? to have, have the tree ever been picked out? No, the um, Paul's wife said that uh, she. You know, happy to have us coordinate what type of species, when to plant. Um, she just poked a little reminder to say, hey, you know, because it had been a couple of years. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously, the changing. That would probably be the biggest deciding factor because there's certain times of year that are better than others to plant a tree. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be a, you know, obviously native species, especially if it's going to the wildlife reserve. Something. So, 
I'm looking for someone to uh, spearhead this project, and I think I have a good person right at the end of the table to my right. <laughs> Seeing that tree you know, fell on you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 you want to make, make good and picking out a tree? No, uh, Paul Alexanderson, I really, I came on the board and he was just okay, he was kind of leaving. But uh, how do we want to handle trees? I, mean, I could do some research and see. Um, you could also check to see what the town might want there for a tree. Yeah. They have, they've already planted some trees in that vicinity. The who? Who in the town? I believe like which department? DPW, DPW? probably. Because okay. that's part of the, the parking lot area. Okay. Along, was it North Lane? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was a couple of small trees. I think there might even be one there already with them. Yeah, because it was supposed to be a, a, a bee habitat. No, but I think there's also a, a small tree that might have it. There's a plaque. 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 Yeah. plaque. I don't know who that was for. I don't remember oh. it either. So I should also probably order a plaque to go with the tree. Yes. Okay. Yes. If I'm correct, if, uh, we can we can make a little drive down there. I think there's a young yeah. tree there. I believe sure. there's a. There's a, something on there. Okay. I don't. I can't recall who that was for. Okay. No. Yeah. But we're probably doing something similar. Okay. I'm happy to to hop on board with getting this, you know, coordinated and. Mm-hmm. set up. Um, you know, I was already in communication with Kestrel Land Trust because they helped us arrange um, doing kind of like a blog post, newspaper article, and I know that... Um, I think we should look at this rather that, quickly right now because May, June, this will be the ideal planting time. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm happy to jump on board. I can uh, talk to Scott tomorrow and see, you know, who to talk to. About when you're back next in the office, I'll give me a call, I'll come grab you, we'll go look at the site together. Okay. I'll be there mm-hmm. tomorrow morning. And, tomorrow morning? Um, yeah, we, I needed to talk with you and Carolyn together anyways. So okay. If you could, I was going to ask you to come by tomorrow. What time are you going to be there? I want um, to I'll be there like 8.30. I have a meeting at 12, so I'm free all morning. The meeting at 12 is at the town hall? Uh, it's at the library. It's a uh, department head meeting, 12 to 1. Okay, because I think I'm going to leave first thing. I have to do, take care of some business first thing in Springfield. I'll be back probably about 10 o'clock ish. Yeah. And I'll, take, I'll, I'll be in contact with you. Okay. We'll, we'll Sounds good. We'll, we'll get this going. Okay. I, they both deserve a proper memorial. Yeah, let's get this done in May, May June. Okay. We, we yeah. Right. Well, you just, I couldn't do it uh, because some health issue came up. Yeah. That's okay. And I just couldn't do the sign on uh, Rocky Hill Road. Yeah, that's, that's is, okay. is, is the post already in place? I have yeah. it at home. Okay. So the post has to be installed yet. Right. I was going to go there and put the post up, and then we were going to have the ceremony, I guess, a uh, weekend or something, and mm-hmm. then just uh, put have somebody put the sign up. So when would you be able to put the post up? You're not going to be able to for a while? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not this week, because yeah. we just are planting time. About a couple weeks, be able to get it in? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, it won't take long. Okay, so if you get the post put in place at some point, yeah. then we just have a ceremony putting the sign up on the post. And right, and that's it. Yeah. And then if somebody wants to say a few words, we'll okay. let them. And then we don't do the sign and the tree, same day, same event? I would do the same day, same event. Okay, right. okay. I, I think, think that's a good opportunity. I'd, I'd, I'd like to see both of them uh, commemorate together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, Scott and Mary's back from the Gazette will advertise once we have a date. Um, they, they had posted before, and then they yeah, posted they that we had postponed, so... I told him I'd be in touch. Okay. So I'm, I'm happy to, you know, get going on this and make sure we get a nice proper commemoration. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sounds, All right. Sounds great. Go team, go. Okay. Minutes. April 12, 2022. Minutes. Uh, I sent a copy down. I think Edwin has it. Yeah, we saw. Yeah. I I knew that we accept the minutes. Second. Uh, no discussion. Hearing no discussion. Any discussion? No discussion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. I spent five. Okay. Unanimous. <laughs> Sorry. It's not Friday yet, Gary. No. <laughs> cool. Do we want to go upcoming learning opportunities? Yeah. The following free webinars and events are coming up in May. Charlotte's planning on attending all these. Except for tomorrow because I have a conflicting meeting and I'm sad because I want to learn about soils. I'm sure, I'm sure Gordon could give you a, a good class of soils. Oh, yeah. Being a farmer, he is. Yeah. The toils of soils. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and is happy to help commission members sign up. May 11th, tomorrow, from 12 to 1 is soil. It's what plants crave. <laughs>
<laughs> it doesn't say that, does it? Yeah. It does. That's the name of the event. You know, I went to a webinar last week called Urine in My Garden, and it was about using urine as fertilizer. Uh, uh, I can hear your eyes roll. That's cool. <laughs> He's a uh, environmental sense of humor here. <laughs> Put on by the Ecological Landscape Alliance. Oh, May 17th from 2 to 3 p.m. is dust. I don't know how to pronounce that. Palliatives. <laughs> for unpaid roads, case studies, and lessons learned put together by the US DOT. Mm -hmm. May 18th from 12 to 1, Hydrilia, the many headed monster live stream, put on by the Connecticut River Conservancy. May 25th from 12 to 1, MACC free lunch and learn life of a forest cutting plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Seeing no more on the agenda except a word of adjournment. Do we have any other further things to discuss? No, I, mean, I, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Seconded by Gordon? Yeah. Yep. No discussions required. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Aye. And uh, seeing that we, I should have made some comment earlier, but we still don't. I'll link one more comment. I just want to. Don't set it off yet. I just want to commend Shyla and all the great work you've done. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. We've come a long ways with your help. Thank you. We're, we are aboard once, once again, uh, well, working well together. Well, thank you all for answering when I call because your help has been it's instrumental been, as it's well. It's been a learning experience for all of us. Oh, yeah. God, yes. Okay. <laughs> yep. okay. We're adjourned. Thank you.